Welcome, 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 everyone. I'm uh, your host, Mines, through the Mind's Eye, and uh, Chops is here with me. I hope uh, you guys are hungry. We're uh, getting ready to make uh, a couple different things. Stuffed mushroom caps, as you can see below the stove top, a charcuterie board, and a uh, braised short rib, which we've already got some going, and we are working on, we're going to make uh, a full set that we're going to have for dinner. Yeah, if you guys have any sort of issues with the cameras or with the audio, please let me know. Uh, I literally have my computer on the kitchen counter and my entire monitor is the kitchen table. <laughs> I think Chopstick can uh, attest to that. <laughs> yeah, I hope you guys are uh, ready to go and we can get started. But first off, let me make sure I've got everything done. We're gonna start with the mushroom caps. First things first, we need to take two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. We're going to have two tablespoons of uh, olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. We're going to stir in both some salt and pepper. We've got three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. Three quarters of a table or teaspoon of salt, and we're going to have three. Half a teaspoon of pepper. And this is going to be the glaze that we have all of our mushroom caps kind of tossed in. Want to make sure there's a nice mix to them. Everything. We're starting off with just under 20 uh, mushroom caps that the stems have been removed. So you can see right here, we've got them all here. And we're going to toss these here. At Get them nice and evenly coated. And with that, we are going to take half of the mushroom stems. And with the half of the mushroom stems, we are going to chop them up. The other half we're going to set aside. If you don't like mushroom caps, you certainly can use crostinis little coins of, you know, sourdough bread and everything else. And they will work just fine. The recipe calls for mushroom caps. And even though I'm not the biggest fan of them, they are still tasty enough that I can eat them. Once you're done, you're going to set these mushroom caps aside. These we are using crimini mushrooms or cremini mushrooms. The recipe sometimes calls for white mushrooms. It just depends on what you want. I find that the crimini mushrooms are a little bit larger. So you get a little bit more of kind of a that mushroomy flavor as well as kind of a bigger vessel to put the stuffing in. Once your mushroom caps are nice and coated, set those aside. And you're done with that. Rinse my hands off for a second. Once that's done, next up, we will then start making our filling. It starts off with 12 ounces of spicy Italian sausage. We have three ounces of aged extra sharp cheddar cheese. We have four scallions that are sliced thin right here and we have a quarter of a cup of panko we have three tablespoons of white wine we have the rest of the salt and pepper which is the three quarters of a teaspoon and half a teaspoon of pepper we have three cloves of garlic that are minced 
And for this, I'm cheaping out. I'm actually just going with the packaged stuff. I know it's not the same, but it's still tasty. There's the quarter cup of panko. And then we have thyme, where we have one tablespoon of fresh thyme. So the goal of this, I'm gonna take off my ring and my watch because it gets quite messy, is you are going to hand combine all of the ingredients. At this point, you start off with the sausage, the cheddar, uh, the scallions, the panko, etc., etc. Start doing a little bit at a time, just to kind of mix to make sure. Oh, there's the Parmesan cheese. So the reason I'm doing a little bit at a time is because you don't want to have um, the cheddar kind of clump up and become a, a ball of cheddar then it's just, as it melts, it's going to be a little, uh, it's gonna be quite a bit more oily and greasy. But, let's see what I got here. I'm trying to wanna make sure that you break up all the cheddar balls because it tends to clump together quite a bit. In, we'll get the garlic in as well. It's nice and moist, my wife's favorite word, as she's glowering at me. And at this point, we can dump the rest of this in. But it's basically forming a nice, almost meatball-like texture. But instead of with ground beef, you're looking at sausage. So pork meatballs, sausage meatballs, whatever you want to be. pan over the stove top grate. As we finish getting all the cheese over, I'm also going to add half of the mushroom stems that we removed earlier on. Just the cheese is all the way in here. So about nine or so of the mushroom stems. Chop them up. So you have a nice kind of even mix. It's not, it's not crispy or crunchy. It's not just ground beef. It's not cheese. It's just kind of a mix of everything. I just want to make sure you combine it all and it kind of forms almost a dough ball. By the way, is anybody having trouble hearing me? Or is the microphone in a decent setup or decent distance from my mouth? I know it picks up quite a bit. I get the sound, by the way. Good. Duck over, Laura, the gift is sent. Oh, 
Doc, thank you for the gift. Appreciate it. One of my uh, UK friends. I just recently recently. Dean, tell a joke. Tell a joke. All right. Well, you guys hear about the restaurant that they're trying to open up on the moon? See it now. The reviews are already coming in. Great food. No atmosphere. Then once it's done, all you got to do is you got to make little tiny balls. That I'm not used to. And uh, yeah, just stick them on the mushroom caps. <laughs> that joke is success. Good. Yeah, I've never been what, four feet, five feet from the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> that one was for you, Eden. Okay, so by the way, we have our oven heating at 425 degrees. Something I forgot to mention before. It's already on, it's already preheated. But it's not. Okay. Eek. Yeah. Well, the oven is now being preheated to 425 <laughs> degrees. I'm actually going to put these on a cookie sheet. I'm going to bring the cookie sheet over here. Do this. For anyone that doesn't know Chopsticks here, he's uh, playing my sous chef. Cheese on the mushrooms? You mean the Parmesan cheese that I had earlier? This? This goes on at the very end. And that's coming up in just a second. Good thing about these mushrooms and the fact that we are still preheating the oven is that the mushrooms can actually be covered and refrigerated for up to an hour before cooking them if you so choose. So it's not like something that you need to make and you know, get in the oven immediately. I don't think we're going to have to wait very long because our oven preheats fairly quickly. He said, move the pot so you can see the pot. I'm off to the side. You won't be able to see the camera. Unless you're saying you want me to move the pot lid so you can see the reflection off of that. Uh, we all did, kind of. I did a lot of the chopping. Uh, my wife and Chopsta did a lot of other stuff while I was taking a shower. We all just kind of yeah. team effort, Eden. Team a effort. Absolutely. Otherwise, it would have taken me three times as long, <laughs> and that would not have been very fun. Especially after staying up late last night. Oh yeah, <laughs> our stream actually ran until what was it twelve thirty, almost one o'clock. Yeah. And by the time I got to bed, it was about one o'clock. I I woke up and. Yeah, it was, uh, wasn't too, uh, I'm still tired. Let's, let's just put it that way. Have our last one. And yeah, so we did make enough for 24 of these mushroom caps, but I didn't want to use the full 24 mushroom caps because I'm going to be using some to put on Christini's because I prefer the sourdough coins. But... Those are our mushroom caps, and 
should be able to see a preview of what they're going to look like if you look below the uh, below where the cookie sheet is now. And again. Go ahead, Eden, ask a question. Yeah, go ahead. Feel free to interrupt me as much as you want, as long as it's to ask a question. Oh, dear. Use lyrics of a song. Which is that? Everybody eats. Yes, everybody eats. Yes. Everybody, everybody eats. Everybody eats. <laughs> Well, I'm making a lot because if I was to eat all this food and the charcuterie and all the British short ribs on my own, I'd burst. Broke on the boat. Woke up as a stream started to panic. I was late. Broke on his plate. And then started it. Uh oh. Except on a plate. Well, too excited there. <laughs> Oh, Eden asked, when you buy your ingredients, do you select name brands? Uh, it depends on what it is. Uh, for like the cheeses and everything else, uh, they are very picky. Cheeses that my wife likes to eat, cheese that isn't melted. So for like the charcuterie, there's a very specific type of cheese. She has, she knows her cheesemonger on a first name basis. For things like um, ground beef, typically it's Generic stuff. We we do tend to go with organic stuff because our daughter is organic and her good stuff. So we go with organic stuff for mainly fruits, vegetables, uh, ground beef. Hey, Splintera, welcome in. And yeah, I mean for everything else, it, it's uh, produce. As I said, is mostly organic. We do have some name brand stuff for cookingware because I'm very OCD when it comes to cleaning stuff. Have enamel covered or enamel um, enamel coated cast iron. That way we can actually put in the dishwasher if we need to, but we can cook at high heat and not have to worry about the very bottom of the pan getting the smell. Hey Daniel, welcome in. So let me get this started because those are ready to go. Once the oven is at 235, well, when that gets to 425, we will continue and put these in the oven. In the meantime, we're going to move over to the other camera and we're going to be talking about charcuterie. For people that don't know, charcuterie is a meat and cheese platter, typically served as an antipasto or appetizer type thing. A picture of some of the ones that we've done below. Senna said hi there. Hi, Senna. Hi, Galera. Hi, Kevin. Hi, everyone who's in here. I am so far away from my actual computer. I have my desks or my, my monitor set up on the TV, but the text is still very, very tiny. Charcuterie. My wife is giggling. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so we talked about enough this time. <laughs> or it won't, or it won't. <laughs> okay, so first things first. Two types of salami. types of salami that we're using are the caprese, which is a spicier sausage. And then we have just regular Italian dry salami. We're using the Ollie brand today. Let me show you guys what that looks like. Regular Italian dry salami. Yeah, let's turn the mic. How is that? Is that better? Oh, you got rated. Southern man. 
Hey, thank you for the raid, Southern Man. Welcome in. How have you been? Raid hype. Raid hype, indeed. All right, so, oh, first things first. We need, we need a wine glass. Typical wine glass, red one, white wine glass. This is the smaller of the two, if you are fancy like that. And we are going to make our first salami rosette. The way that the rosettes work is you literally bend it over the side of the glass. Literally, bring the salami over the glass. Big or small? Oh, a thousand bitties. A thousand bitties? Who's wasting their money? Oh, Zen. Toki Togainu girl. Thank you very much. All the bitties. All the bitties. What I'm trying to do here is, I'm, as I'm putting it over the glass, I'm doing four, one, two, three, four, and then I'm doing it in the corners. And it kind of forms, as you can see, it flips over, and it starts to form the flower petals. It does take a little bit of practice to get this thing to move. Better. Jack Nickel. Oh, Jack Nickel. That's fantastic. Come on, Jack Nickel. You followed me earlier today. Hope uh, your boyfriend's stomach is all right. Thank you for that. That's quite a bit of the punishment we are. Not expecting. This one we have in this one pack. Else the meat, the Vikings would be happy. Indeed. <laughs> okay. I was wondering if we need to put more because it's taking so long. But now that it's, you can see it's basically holding its shape and size. Just bend it slightly. Any luck. Ta-da! Yes, round of applause, as my wife does in the dad joke manner. Get a different size salami. You can do pin glasses. You can do if you wanted to do a lot bigger ones like uh, I don't know. That's the one that's like bologna. I think it's bologna. Red wine glass instead of white wine glass. Need to do more here because this one. I don't think that we.
you have some not tan brie. Oh, was it? Three triple fry, triple whatever it is. Okay, I don't need cheese. Or cream brie. Then we have this balsamic. One has the balsamic on the crust. Vinegar, crust, and it's just a parmesan cheese. Pretty simple. Caps is putting the mushroom caps in the oven at 425. Someone was asking once you have all the glasses, could you flash freeze it for a few minutes to allow it to hold? Absolutely. Certainly could do that. Obviously, the more you know, the more it will hold its shape, the longer it will be, the better it will be for you. And a lot of biddies right now. Let's do it with a lot of biddies, Sharky with biddies. Thank you, Celestia. Thank you, Sharky. Sassmaster with the follow. Sass. And Sassmaster. Hi, Sassmaster. Know that the trick that she has used. Everything else first. You want to show you what it looked like. Give a little four hat training. What? A little four hat training. Why? Biddies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. So. We're going to stick this in the fridge. I'm starting to get nice and warm. Cool, so it'll hold its shape for a little bit. We're going to start with the crackers. Nice and simple. We are doing well, Sass. Hey, come on. We got some good food cooking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, also, uh, yeah. note to everyone who's here. If you are planning on cooking great short rib, make sure that everyone knows because otherwise you're going to have people wanting to leave the house because they're hungry all day. You're right, Sharky. You're right. Mm -hmm. so we went, and these are basically generic never covered pretzels. I just take some crackers, set it on the side, and then make sure all the pretzels are facing out. Okay. All of the pretzels to be facing out. Mark says, bye. Hi, Cinnabar. The bar is a DVD streamer or a variety streamer, but I met him playing DVD. We got more biddies. More biddies. More biddies. Everyone. 1100 biddies. Let's go. Everyone's wasting their money today. Well, first time chatter, Mama Fan. Oh, Mama Fan. She's from, uh, I met her through another DVD streamer called FETV. This is a knife. Knife. That was for Sharky, because I know she hates my Australian accent. <laughs> yeah, I agree. You should be. 
So by the way, the round crackers, ours, this is an actual name brand cracker and I know that they are delicious. They have the right amount of salt and texture and opening a panzanella. My wife is groaning at that. She is 100% Italian and I like to make fun of the accent. <laughs> it's what I do. All of the accents. Absolutely. Catnip says, hey. Catnip. Hi, Catnip. Welcome in. This is uh, not my usual stream. Oh, we are going to shut this down. Forbes is here now. Forbes. Oh, Forbes. Nice. I've seen a lot of Forbes everywhere. Forbes is everywhere. He is. Okay. So we got that. We have some Rocco Higos. Chocolate covered figs. Sixty-one percent on level four hydrogen. Sixty-one percent. Good lord. I have no idea why people are donating money. It, our kid goal was starting met. Eighty-three <laughs> <laughs> hmm? percent now. Oh, Eden sub. Oh, thank you, Eden. Thank you very much for the sub. So now we have this. We're going to figure out the cheese. And I think for the brie, it's not something you would slice and put on the charcuterie board. So I'm just going to leave it as is. So I can open it without breaking it. Potentially, that has yet to be decided. So then, what is that? Oh, uh, the train thing. Whichever one we got, level three hydrogen. Thank you for wasting your money. I hope it was worth it. <laughs> so we have the brie. We'll put the brie. Yeah, I'll put that right there. Next thing's next. This is a very, very good, good jelly. Marion Berry Habanero. Grab a spoon. It's more of a preserve. It's a jelly that kind of you want to be mixed up. Hello, it's the bombs. It's damn bombs. What up? Forbes said he'll take half of that brie, throw it in the microwave until it oozes out, and scoop it with Fritos. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he said Chief Snobs would probably slap me. <laughs> okay. Appreciate the lurk. It's a fancy setup indeed, Celestial. Oh, it is a fancy setup, yes. Yeah. So we have just basic generic baby carrots and a bunch of organic grapes. Just to add some color. Since we already have the purple or reddish from the jam, we're going to start throwing carrots around. But I'm just going to be using the carrots to kind of fill the gaps. Because in a charcuterie board, the less gaps you have, the better. Yeah, those pretzels do look good. Oh, yeah. They are. So 
stir some grapes. That. From the top on the right. Alright, I'm going to have to cut up all of these. Or yeah. once all the cheese and the meat. <laughs> all the cheese and the meat. And those white chocolate pretzels wouldn't last long with me either. Oh no, they're yogurt covered. Yogurt covered, sorry. Yeah, yeah it's not. Uh, white chocolate. White chocolate is even better, but uh, not for both. charcuterie. Yeah, both. Of them. <laughs> yes. So you can cut these as thick or as thin as you want. I'm cutting them relatively thin. Here is consistency. Oh. Oh. Or when you're. Yes. As I said. Clean up later. It gets a little messy. Cucumber, threw it on there again for color. And crush it, do we want to chop it on the drum? <laughs> They're asking for a face reveal. <laughs> <laughs> crush it, do we want to chop it on the drum? Let's see. We're going to put the Some ranch dressing for them veggies. Yep. <laughs> I like that combination too. Look at that. Now you have to cut it. Yep. Again, filling in the gaps. Too fancy for me, I just throw it all in one piece when I'm watching cartoons. <laughs> all for the stream. It's all for the stream. It is all for the stream. What did you cook before this? Oh, we were prep uh, prepping the mushroom caps. We made the mushroom caps because those need to go in the oven for 40 minutes or just under. Alternating some of the or balsamic on top and some of it on the bottom. Yeah, we just want to make sure that everything is different. What was this last thing? Oh, oh, having the all 
projections have it right here. If I can move it. Yes, I'm going to move it over so we're we can see it. the whole thing. It's going to be moved. <laughs> yes, I just didn't set up a scene to swap the cameras. That is the very short ribs. The short ribs. Short ribs, you will find out soon. Yes. That's the name you chose last night. I know. Well done with the presentation. Of the play. No. Thank you. Like a box. And another little bit. <laughs> I mean, it's not cheese and meat. Yeah. When Dirty was asking about the nuts earlier. Uh, Dirty loves my nuts. Yes. Most people love your nuts, right? <laughs> wow. And Day Day's here too. What up, Day Day? What's up, Day Day? Welcome in. At the bottom of the stream, you'll see all the stuff that's being cooked. Yes. All right. All right. Moving this over. There. There's the board. Oh. Just because. Flower? And a flower. Actually, oh, that's right. Dirty liked the dates. It's Eden that loved the nuts. That's right. My bad, Dirty. Yeah, my yeah, bad. The, the mid-jules, yeah. The little dates. They are delicious. A nice little surprise. And there you have it. The charcuterie board. I'm going to put it back on the small one so we can start. Okay. You guys are to take that as much as you want. I can confirm the yogurt pretzels are delicious. Yes. Oh, oh, two things. The perfect bite was suggested that we can suggest. Of this board, my favorite is the yogurt covered pretzel. One slice of the calabrese, the spicy salami. One of these. One of these. And the car's watercracker. Paired on top, like this. That's my favorite bite. Sacrilege. <laughs> <laughs> my wife's favorite bite is. Okay. Oh, sure. The Mount Tam with the spicy habanero on any cracker option, including the cucumber in lieu of the cracker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you have a, if you want to try different combinations and find your favorite, you know, people are saying, oh my God, no. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yum. Okay. Um, that's one check on mushrooms. You're almost done. Forty minutes. Well, it's forty minutes, but that's if you wanted to let them get through the whole thing. That's for station and for taste. Just make sure that all the cheeses are nice and crunchy. Great. So these are almost done. You're taking these out in like two minutes. Any face reveal yet? Nope. Sorry, Nova. No face reveal. No, as of yet. Yet. <laughs> <Not> yet. <laughs> However, are going to pull these out for just a second. Yeah, the cheese has melted, and that's what all that oil is. But. Stress ball says hi, how are you? Hi, little stress ball. How's it going? How's Portal? Y'all save your appetites for this meal today? Yes. Yep. This, is, this is the first thing we're eating all day. 
or at least I am. Sprinkle a little bit of Parmesan on top. I know it doesn't look like much now, but when they come out of the oven in another three or so minutes, Parmesan will be cooked. Everything will be delicious. Ooh, someone asked who's the best chef between you and your wife. I'm a better chef. He's she's... a better chef. I'm a better baker. Yeah. My wife loves to bake. I like to make food. He's a better bartender. Two. Alexa, set a five minute timer. Ooh. Basically, they're a good team. Yes, absolutely. Love my dinner tonight is salmon roast. I get to look forward to something. Ooh, that's got to be Togani Girl. Yep. Yep. Her favorite dish in the world is salmon roast. She gets it on special occasions. Okay. So. Next up is time for the main event. Yes. Beef. Well, we have potatoes that I want to turn on. So Dirty, what you're saying is you just eat, right? Eden does the cooking and the baking? Sad, <laughs> uh, I like to cook and bake. Nice. Whereas for me, I just like to eat. <laughs> Maybe smoke steaks. That's about it. I'm hungry. Okay, so. Or very sharp it. This is a very simple recipe, but it needs a decent amount of prep. Start off, two tablespoons of vegetable oil. Cooking in a high heat pan. With the dirty on that one. <laughs> what? I didn't get to 240 ish by myself. <laughs> so, once we get this up to temperature, now tell me if I turn this on. Is that too loud? Can you guys still hear me? I can turn the fan on. Medium it's not, okay. Medium works. Yes, I have my phone above the stove top and I have another phone on the shirt here. <laughs> so, uh, I just wanna make sure that everything's here. For a family of four, that's a lot, sad. Yes, it is. So we have the oil, once it's getting up to heat, we need to start seasoning our short rib. So with our short rib, this because I can't do this over the hot stove. This is going to 
going to work is salt and pepper. As generous helping with salt and pepper on all sides. Spice of life, literally. Welcome back, Michelle. Is that double up? That's a double up. Let's just miss. The mushrooms are coming out of the oven right now. These are the White Crusade. They're the same brand as the uh, the same brand as the enamel coated cast iron that we have. Same pots and pans we are using our entire house worth of La Crusade. They are very expensive, but they are the same. There's a brand called Stav, which is a very similar uh, brand. They have a lot of the same kind of stuff. They're slightly different in their pros and cons. Those are the mushrooms. I will plate them in just a second as soon as I can get these off. Well, as soon as I can get these started, we brown these short ribs. And it's just salt and pepper, nice and simple. You have to see them all sides. That's, this is the longest part of this entire recipe. That's raid. Raid? Who's raid? Oh, in, in Noma. Noma. In Noma. It's nighttime over there. We're getting ready for uh, for bed, and I'm here I am cooking dinner. Welcome, Raiders. Welcome, Raiders. We got salt, pepper. I really need to get one of those automated ones. I need two of those mushrooms. <laughs> A what? I need two of those mushrooms. <laughs> Would you like me to plate them for you? You want me to put them on a white plate for you? My wife is graciously offered to plate the mushrooms for me. What's up, Red for Doves? What up? Hey, Red for Doves is here. What's going on, man? So the menu is on the bottom of the stream. Mushroom. Mushroom, short ribs. Mushroom, short ribs, and short cooter. Yes, raise short ribs. Oh, double O is uh, hungry. We'll probably have enough for him too if he wants to come <laughs> up and bring his girl. Uh, double O for show is a wedding photographer from Hook of. Yes, and he's a camera <laughs> guy. A wedding photographer. No uh, way. He's the one that's been helping me kind of do research and was trying to help me figure out how to do. This cooking stream without a camera. <laughs> <laughs> then this. For the ends, I'm just going to pick up whatever's left of this. Oil. Taste testing. Okay. Roll the nice salt and pepper. One of everything. <laughs> Redford does one of everything. PayPal, please. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll be able to open up an overnight shipping thing. 
If I make partner, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open up an only can kind of thing, but it's not going to be cans of beer like OP has. <laughs> Mushrooms. Ta-da! Jeff, you are the, uh, or Jocelyn, you are the food critic, so. Do you need a cool, probably, in another couple minutes, maybe? But let me know what you think. Pretty short read. Does right work. That was. Okay. Now, I'm going to start fat side down. That's why. Okay. Well, I forgot to turn the stove on. Rookie mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Confirm those are delicious mushrooms. Oh, okay. <laughs> first time. Oh, first time. All right. We'll give this just a second so we can get to let the oil come up to temperature. Well, Red for Dubs, it is a cooking stream, so we expect people hungry watching. <laughs> I hope so. This is why I drove up three hours. <laughs> well, this is why you were heated. Yeah. And then drove up three. This is why I was never be pissed. Yeah. Perks of living with me. You'll never be hungry. Okay. Just washing my hands. Dirty Bird, thank you for that fact. He said, believe it or not, you need to turn on the stove to cook on. Oh, yeah. The more you know. The more you know. And no one's half the battle. Oh. Uh, Basically, yeah. Ken me says, new here, hi. Will there be more cooking streams? There, I'm sure there will be. Hi, you're kidding me. How'd you find the, uh, the channel? Glad you're here. Rat oh, Rattascore's here, too. Luca's here. Hey, Luca. Luca's also local. She works with Love Low. Max is there, Ken. Thank you for the work. You couldn't boil water? <laughs> So Eden and Dirty Bird are husband and wife, and Eden does a lot of the cooking. And oh, and you got a follow from your kidney. Thank you for the follow, your kidney. I had no idea that this was going to be this popular. Hey, I'm, I'm having fun. I hope you guys are. Potatoes. Oh, by the way, when I turn the potatoes on, the potatoes are here, and they are boiled, or they're going to be parboiled, or full boiled, I guess, um, in water that has a heaping spoonful of better than bouillon paste of chicken stock. And what you want to do for making mashed potatoes, at least this way, is we end up putting in just enough bouillon that the water is opaque, that you can't see the potatoes inside. We have currently, I think, six peeled Yukon Gold potatoes that we will be mashing uh, as soon as they're done. Let me see if the, uh, the oil is done and we can start browning uh, the short rib. So, pro tip to check and see if your oil is hot enough. Drip a little bit of water on there. And I don't know if, the, if you can hear that, but uh, yeah. As long as it's bubbling and popping, it's done. It's, it's hot enough. Even had a corrective. She says she does all. Yes. <laughs> of that, I'm sure. <laughs> well, Dirty has to eat something, Eden. <laughs> oh, smoker are awesome. I have a fellow smoker. Yes. Smokers are amazing. I've had a Traeger for years. Now listen to oh, that. Oh, he's that raw dough? No. What? No, no way. What about Rado? Christina? 
Oh, you Pino? Yeah. Oh, you Pino's here. Sizzle. Yeah. Yes. That's so you know something's happening. That ASMR sizzle. We need some more. Exactly. That's, that's why I still tag this as ASMR. <laughs> I want another one with mushrooms. Um, yeah. But yes, yeah, so we are browning these in batches because there's not enough for the whole thing to be nestled all together. When they cook, we're going to be cooking them all in one pot. I do. Welcome from Australia. You're kidding me. Welcome in. Hello. Awesome. Welcome to my first cooking show. Exactly. It is a redeemable option on this channel. I will need to figure out some sort of cooldown because people have been saving up for a while. Once a week helps. It makes it a little longer to add up. Yes, it does. Until they're browned evenly all the way throughout, uh, I'm literally going to do all six sides. Top, bottom, both sides, and then both ends. But the smell feature with the, yes, yeah. you, you want it to be that. No, no. smell of vision. <laughs> smell of vision would be awesome. So the whole point of this, of browning, is not to cook it, just to get the outsides seared. You see this nice layer of jiggle right here. Jiggle. And unfortunately, our stovetop grate is not flat. Yeah. It's close, but it's not perfect. So that's why you'll see me constantly uh, pushing over to one side. Because this is an oblong shape, and it's not around so come on there we go oh you didn't ask how did you decide on the menu decide on the what how did you decide on the menu for the day decided on the menu was kind of simple for me I don't know how many of you guys know this, but I have been starting to collect recipes and build my own recipe book. I have a number of different cocktails that I've made. Uh, like this very short rib is a recipe that I found and I've tweaked to make it a little bit more tasty for my palate. Uh, the mushrooms are the same way. Charcuterie is just charcuterie. It's something that people have really enjoyed the pictures that I've taken and posted. As you can see below, that was for Thanksgiving and Christmas last year was when we first made the short ribs. They were delicious. And then I decided to use a slightly different uh, piece of wine or bottle of wine. Speaking of which, uh, I get to introduce Chopsta to both the spicy Barbera that we will be using later on in the very short ribs, as well as my favorite wine, which is called La Fantasia. And it's only available locally in Napa. So look at that nice brown sear. So we remove the short ribs. Look at that bubble. You remove the short ribs. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, we're not done. I almost forgot. All the sides. All the sides. The reason you want all the sides is because you don't want any of the juice to seep out. 
it's going to be boiling in juice. But the more you can keep inside, because the sear, the better. <laughs> well, that was the point. But even the recipe book that I'm working on, I'm hoping to have a couple, at least another 10 or 15 new recipes this year, and the same next year. And if I can get that going, eventually I'd like to have my cookbook, you know, or my recipe book either available on like an Amazon or, or something online. I don't know if I just want to release it to friends for free or if I want to try and sell it for like 99 cents. Just something. I mean, I'm all for sharing it. I have no problem doing that. I'll probably end up posting on my Discord and say, come here for all your recipes. Yeah. Uh, we put a Yeah, Luca, you and Double O, I would definitely have you guys come up. Even just to taste, but yeah, I mean, for yeah. photos for that. My wife says she will never ever be thin as she takes more of the charcuterie. Um, but yeah, no, I would definitely be down for that. Hey, it's Princess Boogala. How's it going? The high beam of all of I see a lot of mine too. I'm surprised that that one has a lot of. Oh yeah, Boogie got uh, one of the gifted subs last night, and then she gifted like five other people. That's awesome. Yep. That's right, Dirty. You can buy some cookbook, and you get to enjoy it. What score would I give the fun guy? What? Uh, probably a 10, because as long as you like that Italian sausage, it's really good. Yeah. I don't like mushrooms. I don't like, I like the flavor of mushrooms. I don't like eating mushrooms. And I can eat these like it's nothing. The mushrooms really absorb the flavor of the cheddar and the sausage, and there's a little bit of a kick to it, and a little bit of spice, a little bit of uh, you know onion, and it's delicious. All right, I have a joke about ribs. Joke about ribs? No, I don't know any jokes particularly about ribs. I know a bunch of jokes about skeletons, but not ribs in particular. Huh? They do have it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Huh? I'm right here, Abby. I'm here. Yeah, Chops is right here. Right here. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, everybody. It's Chops. Have a beautiful time. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. There's Chops. There you go. He's right here, Daddy. All right. I like how it's still showing the actual smoke, but it's not actually clouding. Yeah. Are you kind of in? Okay. They want the sizzle, you know. Yes. I will work on that. That will be one of my next emotes. As soon as I can get my follower emotes, I will make sure that that is one of the ones that I get next. Dirty, it's called a flavor saver. <laughs> what is your wife's favorite meal that I cook? What? What is your favorite meal that I cook? Prime rib, hands down. Prime rib, hands down. 6.30, best time of the day. Ha, <laughs> 
Yep. Better response than it. I heard it be slow over Yes, I do. Every once in a while. Even said it's primarily the same for code book. You can have a series of tabs. Oh, no, there will be several different questions for time. There's three different ways that prepare. Oh, I have to be specific about the way you prepare it. My favorite is the reverse sear with the garlic, with the garlic butter glaze. Mm -hmm. This Eden birthday meal every year. That's a great choice, Eden. Place in Vegas, you can get a really good front there. Which one, Galahad? heard that my wife's second favorite dish is steak diane which is my favorite meal ever the first time i tried to prepare it for my wife because she never had it she wanted me to prepare it for the two of us and her parents who came over for christmas so it's christmas eve and i'm sitting here and with the uh, let me get this going So it's Christmas Eve, and with Diane sauce, or, or steak a la Diana, you have cognac or sherry, you have heavy cream, you have white wine, and a couple of other things. Tomato paste, some people use hot sauce, other people don't, and you flambe it. So you put in the cognac with the peppercorn and the brandy and all this, light it on fire to burn off the alcohol. Um, and then after that, you stir in heavy cream. You don't temper it, you stir it. So you have hot alcohol and cream, which typically doesn't mix, but in this it does. So I light it on fire to flambe it, and I've got two pans because I don't want to put in a whole cup of cognac and then light the whole thing on fire. So it starts off here. The flame comes all the way up, catches the grease on our old house. The, the grease that's over here catches on fire. It burns the light bulbs and catches the fan inside the hood on fire. So I have metal mesh dripping down onto the stove top. My wife is calling the fire department. And the fire department came out Christmas Eve because I literally lit the house on fire. They came in with their x-ray uh, boroscope or whatever it is to make sure that there was no damage to the ductus. But that was my story of lighting the house on fire. You would never forget. Yes. Well, also, I served the dish. It was so spectacular. Despite all of that drama, the house was on fire. It was wonderful. And I decided to serve the dish. Her father, who was a chef, didn't stop talking about it for two weeks because he liked the dish that much. That's a tip. Mm -hmm. This thing I ain't burns the house down. If the house catches on fire, the food is more important. <laughs> it's gonna be delicious. Nice sizzle and brown sizzle. Nom, nom, nom. Okay. So now, once that's done, it mm. looks black, it looks bad. Don't worry about it. It's supposed to. So, we are 
Turning off the heat for just a little bit. Potatoes are boiling. That's almost done. Potatoes, we're going to boil to their fork tender. And then we get the mash up. Onion ninjas. What? Who do you doubt when you have good food? Amen. Hey, the what? I said not the onion ninjas. <laughs> not the onion ninjas. No, that, that comes in just a little bit. So we are pouring off all. Pour off all except two ounces or two tablespoons about of the brown bits and the goodies. Here. Goodies. Here is where we need to chop up the onion, the carrots, and the celery. While we do that, place the two things of garlic uh, cut side down. Okay, go ahead of this. That to go there. So those are going to kind of caramelize and become a gold, nice golden brown on the bottom while we cut the end. And pro tip for cutting the onion, I wanted to do this on camera because something a lot of people don't know. Instead of just cutting the onion, you kind of see what I've done already. All the skin off. Wants to work. Instead of just cutting the onion itself, you know, just chopping and chopping and chopping, you can actually go. And it cuts almost all the way through. Not to cut your fingers. Firefly, there. What's up, Firefly? Firefly. Welcome in. 
dirty. I'm not crying, you're crying. So you cut it one way, you flip it 90 degrees, you cut it the other way. Again, almost all the way through, not quite. Holding it together. Because you're trying to get a nice fine mince. Now, you can see there's a crisscross pattern. I just go like, oh, going this way, I'm going this way. You can slice it. Yeah, look. We're glad you're here, Firefly. Hope you had fun with the family. You're star I, I believe you're being starving after we're watching all this. <laughs> so Double O says, I do that from the top to make a crop pattern. Top of truck way is how I call it. Yes. Fantastic. Firefly at the 100 feet. Hey, thank you for the 100 feet, Firefly. Thank you very much. I just cut them. If you end up with a big chunk, suck it up. <laughs> yep. And then when I'm done with that, I do the same thing. It sucks to be trying for no reason. Yep. Not done. Need to get I go the cheater way and use onion powder. That's fair. <laughs> that works. So now we Saves have you some tears using onion powder. We have two medium carrots, we have four celery ribs, and some onions. And just to make sure, nice golden brown on the garlic. That's a little more than golden brown, but it's still good enough. Flexible cutting board. Works great. My dad showed me how to cut them that way before he does that for his eggs for breakfast. Your dad's Smart man. man. Smart man. In, indeed. Okay. Now the potatoes are just about done. We're going to strain them. But we need to get a wooden spoon. Now we're going to cook. The vegetables, yeah, we're just going to cook the vegetables a little bit, get them to soak up all that nice brown bits. And soften up just a little bit. This is, you know, these aromatics, for most people that don't know about cooking, celery, carrots, and onions are the trifecta of what's called aromatics. They release a little bit of flavor, and it's really the smell. Uh, Whenever you taste food, it's basically 90% smell. There's a little bit that you can actually taste, but if you plug your nose when you eat a lot of food, you won't be able to taste most of it. But, so in any roast, and if you're like dressing a turkey or stuffing a turkey, in almost every single stuffing, you have celery, carrots, and onions. And that's what we have here. What we're going to do now is we're going to strain the potatoes. Oh, did someone ask us that left over on Wilware? Left over on Wilware. Was that left over on No. Um, oh, this. This was um, the when we were browning the meat. When we, we had the, the vegetable oil that was in here. We poured off all except for two tablespoons. But all we wanted was a two tablespoons so that way we could get everything in here. Again, you can see, even though it's brown or it was almost a black look, it's still not too bad. And that will all kind of come back to what happens when we add in the wine, we added the rest of the stuff. So, you can ask for my favorite bite. You do not have a favorite bite. I like it all. <laughs> Can I ask you to hold this over here? Go 
I just want to make sure that these are fork tender. I'm going to stay here. They're almost done. Almost. Leave those be for just a little bit longer. Uh, the vegetables have had a chance to soften up a little bit. We're going to add in three tablespoons of tomato paste. And we're just going to stir to coat all the vegetables, get them nice and have the tomato paste somewhat caramelized around the edge of all the different aromatics and everything else. Let's get a nice mix. Don't mind if I do. No. Okay. We'll get this in here. We'll let, that, we'll let that cook for a couple minutes. You just said it reminds me of the start of the base for a shepherd. Yes, very similar to that, except for we're not going to add ground beef, but we're going to add shorter. Better beef. Yes. Better beef. More fat. Yeah. <laughs> More natural butter. <laughs> so, I'm going to move these over to the front one. This is so good. Try this one more time. Yes, they do, Moro. And if you guys wanted smell vision this is where you'd want it. Yep. It smells delicious. I mean. There we go. Juice. More juice. More juice. You're adding currently two cups of Sobon Estate, which is a local winery here. It's about 45 minutes away in Amador County. But it is a spicy Barbera wine. And this is one of the tweaks I made to the recipe because it just adds so much more depth to the flavor. So we're putting in two cups. Stir that in. Make sure we coat everything nice and well. And this, you're, kind of, you're also use it to deglaze the pan a little bit. Look at the wine. Yep. And then we're going to add two cups of beef stock. And I'm just using kitchen basics. Organic beef stock, nothing fancy. That's a lot of wine, but I ain't complaining. <laughs> Gotta taste good. But the reason we haven't added the beef stock yet is because you wanna wait two to three minutes or so just to let the alcohol cook off. The whole point of this is Yes, you can be a lush if you choose, but it tastes a little bit better when there's less alcohol content in there, and you really get, it brings out the flavor of the wine more. And besides, there's plenty more time to add more wine. <laughs> Check the 
this again. Expect you to be hungry watching this. Potatoes need another minute. And then the potatoes are done. This timing is going to work out very well. Give it one more stir. With uh, the pink hair email, right? Yeah. Her pink hair email? I love that one. And at times like these, it's best to start cleaning up. Throwing things away, putting things away, because the less you have to clean up at the end, the better. Do you stop going in? It's starting to smell really good right now. Glad I have the charcuterie to snack on. Oh man. So once that's going in, game. Like that, we got that. Like big lunch, you know, I eat supper. You stop in the mind's eye kitchen. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> You're eating no matter what if you step in this kitchen. Yes. My wife is Italian. I grew up with a Jewish, Jewish background. You never leave my house. Ever. My wife's grandmother loved me so much because she said, there's no leftovers. <laughs> that is me. Stomach would explode of deliciousness. It'd be oh. all worth it. <laughs> yeah, so the honey. <laughs> Potatoes are done. So now that this is setting up, now it's time to add our short ribs back to the mix. Short ribs that we've kept out of sight, not out of mind. Never go put always, these out of your mind. Always in the mind side. Always. Now we want to nestle these bone side up. You want the meat, as much of the meat below the surface as you can. You just want to nestle them in, making sure that they are not resting on top of the veggies that are down. So you want them below the aromatics. So you just want to nestle them in, kind of shuffle them down back and forth like you're trying to put them inside the sand. 
The goal is to have the entire bone submerged. Oh, it smells great. <laughs> and confirm. We are making a big batch. I think there should be enough room. Obviously, the more of these you cook, the Rabbit more. Says mine. Hmm? Rabbit. Rabbit Weckless. How's it going, Labs? Welcome. 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 Last one in here. Now, side down. Side up. And they're almost fully submerged. Inside down. That was gonna ask where you get the pots from. The pots are from Le Creuset. They are a fairly expensive brand. They have a lot of outlet stores uh, throughout the world. I mean, here in California, you have the Folsom outlets, you have the Vacaville outlets, the Livermore outlets. Almost every single one of them has a Le Creuset uh, store. As for competitors, uh, their biggest competitor is a company called Staub, S-T-A-U-B, and they make things that are, they look almost identical, but the top has little ridges and bumps on the underside of it to help keep moisture. So if you're using it as a Dutch oven, kind of to make uh, you know, roasted chicken, or if you're trying to boil stuff like carnitas, um, that is the way to go for that. And because there's, it's not fully submerged. We're trying to bring it back to a simmer. We're just going to add in a little bit more wine. Because why not? Right. Drinking me. All right. So add in a little bit more beef stock. But again, we're just trying to submerge everything as best we can. Uh, yes, more wine. <laughs> I did mention this is an Italian household, right? <laughs> okay. Oh, almost forgot. Not just for a garnish, but yes, if you have them, you need to make sure you have plenty of time. Four should be about enough. We have a favorite brand for your stocks. For stocks? No. I don't use stock very often. Um, we tend to use Kitchen Basics or... No, I don't remember what else it is. We do use Better Than Bouillon if we're trying to make our own stock. Um, and we make the paste. And I'll actually pull those out. Speakers know how to put my mind and say to these, uh, these guys, smooth boys, mind. So these are the two stocks that we use the most. They're literally the brand is called Better Than Bouillon. This is chicken, this one is steak or beef. And then we're using currently just for instead of trying to make the stock, we're using this. We're just waiting for that to come back to a simmer. And it's almost there. And we can start mashing the potatoes. Oh, smash. And with any good mashed potato recipe, you 
Will it be complete without butter? Shut up. We tend to choose the Kerrygold pure Irish butter, but you can use whatever you want. Uh, I use salted butter in almost everything that I cook if it needs butter. And then I'm just going to use 2% milk, a local family owned Sunnyside Farms. I typically tend to eyeball this, but I'm sure there are recipes where you have a certain amount of or use a certain amount of milk, certain amount of butter. Uh, typically, normally when we do these, we put cheese in them, but because the Cotswold cheese that we like to use doesn't really lend itself to the uh, sauce of the short rib, I will, I'm not using it here. Eden, mine doesn't like sour cream, so that's why I love sour cream. Yes, I can put some in here, but I don't, typically tend to like it. Happy lasagna, let's go. Oh. Hey, lasagna's here, nice. Lasagna's one of the uh, bigger support streamers that is out there. He's always shouting out other people similar to what OP does, but he'll do streams where he's just shouting out anybody who comes in, and you know, he's big, big on the Twitter, and well, pretty much all bed. social media. He's going to bed, have a good night, Get some sleep. All right, lasagna, have a great night. I hope you're well. Thank you for tuning in for a bit. And again, we're just waiting for the sauce to come to a full simmer all the way around. Ash and potatoes. That's right, the Ash. Whole invitation. All right. So then we'll do this. Yeah, I'll wait a little bit longer now. Potatoes are pretty much done. This will eventually get there. So. Okay, so mashed potatoes we are going to remove for a second. Reason for that being time to throw the short rib in. Now that it's at a simmer, and it's at a simmer almost all the way through, which is fine. We are now going to utilize the magic of Twitch TV. Huh? What's in that pot, mine? Here we go. Somber Kitty. Chops to send you in here. Welcome in. Your friend. Somber Kitty. Oh, Somber's here. What up, Somber? How many of these pots do I have? I have the one oval one that you saw, which is the Dutch oven kind of thing. This is a 
nine inch round, I think 12 inch round. We have the stock pot, which is a different color. Then we have a saute pan, 12 inch skillet. And it's, yeah, that's all we have. Everything else is not stick and it's just, I'm not happy. <laughs> Let's see. I said it has some prepared to go. And smart choice, yes. Wintry has a plate. Yes, Wintry. Come on up. Yeah, Wintry's <laughs> All right. So, let's see. Oh, the other thing. One must have. Right, we're just going to make broccoli. Nice and simple. Broccoli. Okay, broccoli. If you guys want to cook and you want something that will help you out making everything easier, trying to make quick dishes and healthy food, you're gonna want one of these. It's a porcelain steamer bowl that has a top. And it's got a little hole in the middle, you can kind of see it, it looks kind of naughty. But this thing is one of the best things you can do for vegetables. I have some raw broccolini here. You can use broccoli, you can use green beans, you can use whatever you want. But we are going to use this, right? So we're gonna put a full bunch in there, that's fine. We're gonna fill it up with water. That much water. A quarter of an inch. So you've got a quarter of an inch of water in there. You can kind of see it swirling around. Put this on in the microwave. Three and a half minutes. Perfect. Three and a half minutes is on the clock. We now have plate Did the plate go missing? Oh. <laughs> Those are dirty, so. Uh, we have a plate. We're going to put some mashed potatoes. Oh, so that's what was that thing called again? Mm -hmm. the it's a porcelain vegetable steamer. I don't have the specifics. I will be looking it up and posting it once I'm done with plating this. I'll look it up and I'll make sure that I post a link to something similar, if not the same thing. Uh, we bought it at a local chef's warehouse, a chef's surplus store. Um, you, there are vegetable steamers that have glass tops that work just as well. Uh, this one that we have is just porcelain all around, but it is my favorite thing. And it was anywhere between 20 and $30. It wasn't expensive like a sous vide or anything like that where right they're you know, 60 to $150. This is a cheap thing that is just very, very simple. How long and what temp are the short ribs going? Oh, the short ribs go in the oven for four hours at 275 degrees. Taking it low or slow. Ah, uh, that works too. Only had one depends. Are you strong enough that you can hold the bigger one? The I think it's six quart one, the one that we just made the other very short ribs in that can hold a lot more. If you're cooking for just yourself, this nine inch, ten inch um, pot. <laughs> um, but this round one is great. It's about four inches tall, but it's heavy. It's cast iron. Um, I would highly recommend that one for just an overall. Everybody, you know, anybody can use, everybody should use, and it's great for everything. So I don't know how I want to make this presentation, but I'm just plating some mashed potatoes, a minute on the broccoli, and I will show you what the pot says they cook like. Cooking for four. I cook for my wife and my daughter and myself, which is three. This is plenty big for that. If you want to cook, like if you tend to eat 
you know, a serving and a half of meats and vegetables and anything like that. If you want to have extra or if you want to cook for leftovers, get the bigger one. Um, the, the stock pot is unnecessary unless you're cooking, like, if you're steaming, you know, six quarts of pasta, then get the big stock pot. But this one right here, this cast iron, is fantastic. It's an all-around pot. You can use it for eggs. You can use it for very short rib. You can use it for scrambled eggs. You can use it for whatever you want because it's cast iron. Oh, you can even make a pizza. I mean, you put the, the crust on the side or on the sides. You put the cheese on top. Bake it for seven minutes or so to actually melt the cheese and seal the crust. Then you put the uh, the toppings on. Then you put the sauce on. You have a deep dish pizza pie, right? Right there, oh. ready to go. So, as you can see, we have our short rib. And it rocks though. I mean, oh, there's a bone. <laughs> That's how <laughs> fall off the bone this is. <laughs> Literally. Literally. So let's put this here. <laughs> this is the piece of meat. And look at that. Look at that. Woo! We're going to set this here. Grab the onion. And onion here. I'll pick it up by the bone. Just, just by the bone. I can't. <laughs> it's jiggling a lot. So there's that. I like a little jiggle in our lives. Always. <laughs> yes. So take that out. Set that here. What I do is, once it's out, I leave there's just a little bit of a opening there, and it allows the steam to release. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and hold the top on and dump out the water. So I'm going to do that over the sink. Nice steam coming off of it, and you can tell that it's done. Exactly. It's super tender when it falls off the bill. Yes. And you know it's delicious too. So there we have That's how we like the meat. And because this is important. Presentation. We're working on presentation. Always. Um These <laughs> it's so delicious the phone wanted some food. I bombed that food, that's right. The phone was like, <laughs> I'm sure somebody's gonna put that. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what it looks like on the street. <laughs> we will find out. Welcome, welcome in, Raiders. Um, okay. Hold on. Oh, look at slide off. That's <laughs> <laughs> just so tender. 
Come on. There we go. And the bone. And there's the bone. But if you really want to get fancy, let me take out the plate. I'm gonna go get food. I was already hungry. <laughs> Looks like sudden darkness and a whole bunch of sleep. So this getting all the clothes out of the garlic. That's a one two punch right there. That is gone, that is gone. So say we're just stuck with that, with the garlic. Okay. So this, I mean, you can take your finger and just, it just wants to come right apart. I'll set that aside for just a second. Next thing you need to do is we're going to strain the sauce over one of these. This is used to set. So you have the sauce comes in here and the fat will separate, rising to the top, and then you have the spout to pour out the au jus without the fat. So this and you want to strain it with a fine strainer. This is a little too big, but it'll work for our purposes. Once you get all the sauce out, I mean, you can see the bottom of the pan. It's almost spotless. Just rinsing that off and it's gonna be back to normal. Besides, yeah, you just need to scrub a little bit, but that will come right out. That's why I said, don't worry about if the pan looks black or anything when that's done. You have the strained vegetables and there's, some, there's still some garlic in there. And then you have the, uh, the sauce itself. And once the fat is at the top, you can then pour out the jus and have all that delicious goodness that is the aromatics and everything else. Try and speed up that temperature for that process. Let's throw some more. See if we can make this look pretty. It's a presentation. That's my hell of a <laughs> Thank you. 
this. The reason I'm doing this is it's a That's done. Pour the jus over everything. Then we'll have two separate things. So. Turn that off. Continues. There we go. I don't know if you like garlic. Garlic? Oh, I love garlic. Literally mash up the garlic on the cloves. You get a little bit of the braised short rib taste. That's good. But it's just garlic and bread. Garlic and bread, can't go wrong. Okay, this was only one garlic bread. Another one, well there's two of them. But the other one has two. Dishes from, I don't want to say my, my recipe book, but <laughs> it's the soon start of my recipe. Soon to be. Who's my other one? Let there be light. Boom. So for everyone that has seen my pictures in all the different uh, discords, I tend to find discords that food porn and just post a bunch of different pictures. Uh, this is me making it live. Check and see if the... I'm glad to see I've seen it in action. <laughs> all right. I just need to this and see it separates here it separates up here as well so as we start pouring out we're going to pour out this part first because that's where the spaghetti comes from so other ado One. Gotta listen to Dick because Dick makes these all in action. That's why I drove up here. <laughs>
Anybody have any questions? Yep, exactly. You know Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, there's the rest of the kitchen. That used to be my kitchen table. My computer over there. Yeah, and then I need to show Sylvan Barbera. I might as well do this now. This is the Castella di Amorosa La Fantasia. It is a great, great wine. It tastes like strawberry soda. We're going to be opening it for dinner. But at this point, I'm going to set this back up. And this I'll put up here. Sure, that works. That wine looks so unique. Yes, it is. Sarah, I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've showed you how to make it. You can make everything you want. Uh, and also all the ingredients that I've used are down below the main picture. And the last thing that is yet to come is chops and needs to taste these. Tell me what he thinks. I don't think you'll need a knife. I don't think so. But just in case. Super tender, super flavorful, worth a three hour drive here. Garnish. That's the most important part. Garnish. Thank you, Drew. And it tastes amazing, confirmed. <laughs> well, I'm glad everybody was able to make it. I'm, I hope uh, everybody was entertained. Maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't. Maybe you just wanted to share the, the food, which I hope you guys enjoyed the look of. Uh, and we're going to enjoy the taste of it. And we've got all those new bubble British shortcuts for tonight. <laughs> so we're going to have a round two for dinner. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, actually, let me move the microphone so I can sit down for a second. Yeah, there you go. Sit down. Ugh. Voting for another cooking stream again. Yes, it is a channel redemption. Uh, I believe, actually, Togaina Girl is getting close to redeeming it herself. I need to figure out if I'm going to put a cooldown on this. Uh, the reason being is. I kind of have to take over the entire kitchen for however many hours we've been going. Almost two and a half hours. Damn. Um, and I know my wife doesn't like for me to take over basically half the house. <laughs> <laughs> yes, once a month I'm thinking is going to be a thing. If that is the case, uh, I do need to figure out a better camera situation. Uh, I have been looking into cameras, and the one that I want to get is looking to be about $600, but it will allow me to have a webcam that I can stream with, as well as um, be able to take pictures. It will be able to replace 
my Canon Rebel T1i, which is 12 plus years old. Um, if I buy a webcam, I'll still need to bring my computer all the way downstairs in order to do another cooking stream. That is why I want to buy an actual camera that can use uh, Wi-Fi. Plus fits right here. Yes. Uh, that's kind of one of the perks for it. That way you can carry the camera with you. A uh, GoPro, yeah. A GoPro is something to look into. Um, the problem is they use micro SD cards, correct? As opposed to just a regular SD card. The thing is I want to upgrade my camera too because I want to take pictures of more than just yeah. cell phone pictures. Um, GoPro, I feel, doesn't have the versatility to take pictures and to change different types of things. There's you know a single focus thing, uh, focus light. Yeah, I my Canon Rebel I've enjoyed. I borrowed a PowerShot SX70 HS because it works with the um, the EOS webcam utility, but I couldn't get the shutter to stay open longer than three minutes. Uh, that was one of the big things that I I was so happy. I was borrowing a camera. I was going to be able to do this. I was going to be able to um, you know stream. And I, I've got my tripod set up. It uses the same exact kit lenses and every or it doesn't have the kit lens because it's a point and shoot. But I mean, I posted in uh, Double O's Discord for almost about a week trying different things. I bought a micro HDMI to HDMI camera, a um, couple different things, and nothing seemed to work. I couldn't find the correct setting. So now that we have um, kind of the idea that people are going to want to do this again. Uh, I'm going to look into getting the Sony a6000. That's kind of just an entry level thing that I can be an amateur photographer like I used to be as well as use as a webcam. I know it's tried and proven. It's, it's tested, it works, and I have everything that I need to get started with it. I just need the body, but it's still 500 bucks plus. I may end up trying to set up a donation goal for that and just have it be when I get the camera, that'll be a face reveal. Yes, he's the one that recommended it, and I know about 10 other streamers that use it, and they are very happy with it. Um, if there's a Canon equivalent that doesn't use the EOS webcam utility, that will work, and I can just say, yeah, set it open to live stream. I'm open at looking at it. Um, my family has been a big Canon family for 20, 30 years. But, yeah, I mean, I... That's where I'm sitting at right now. I'm, I'm hoping to have another camera or a camera at some point where I can start looking into streaming and possibly have a face reveal. I thought about wearing a Mandalorian mask and having a, you know, the face reveal where it's just the Mando mask. But I figured that was just going to be too trolly. And the fact that I already had the camera set up, um, it just made sense to you know, remain mysterious. Only a few people have seen my face and I can keep it that way. Any types of dinners watching? This has been very enjoyable. 10 out of 10 food, 10 out of 10 voice, 10 out of 10 atmosphere. Great job. Thank you, Togana Girl. All right. Well, the M50 is a good option. That's a Canon camera, I'm assuming. Canon M50. It is. Okay, so it's a Mark II. Yeah, it's more expensive than the A6000. <laughs> He's a 12 year old. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, that is something I will be doing much more research into looking at cameras so I can get higher than I think the Epoch cam and the Irion cam that I've been using for both. Um, <laughs> Chops, there should have a channel redemption <laughs> to show the pick of the mind's eye. <laughs> um, no. Yes, Katie. Chops has said that he did enjoy the food. Um, yes, 10 out of 10. But yes, I am looking at doing cameras. Uh, the two camera apps that I have, I'm using my old iPhone 10 and the iPhone 12, and those have been the two cameras that I've used for stream today. Uh, as I said, I want to get an actual camera because both of those apps are only shooting at like 480p. And if I can get a good 2K or even 4K camera, this would be much more presentable. 
but I, I don't think we did bad to begin with. Um, I'm happy I was able to do this. Thank you, Chopster, for A, redeeming it, B, coming up and, yeah. and helping out, being sous chef and tasting the food. And yeah, it's been nice to meet another streamer for the first time. Yeah, and thank you all for coming in, you know, wasting your money on the bit. I just now saw that Celestia <laughs> cheered 5,500 bits. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, I mentioned that earlier. I didn't know it was that much. Jesus. That's how we got to, it got to level four so quickly. Wow. Well, <laughs> thank you to everybody who has contributed, whether it be being here and just looking and, you know, even if you're just lurking, I appreciate all the support. Uh, I didn't. I really didn't expect people to show up to this. I mean, there were a few people, I figured six, seven, but the amount of people coming in to actually watch me cook live has been phenomenal. I'm very happy that I've met all of you and that you guys have come in. To everybody that found the channel for the first time today, thank you very much for giving my channel a chance. I hope you weren't disappointed and I hope that you're here. Disappointed there weren't more chops than nuts eaten. Nuts. Do you want to bring out the pistachios? Oh, Chopster brought up a bag of pistachios from his family's business, which is a nut farm down in Fresno, or is it in Madeira? It's in Madeira. It's in Madeira. Um, and a big shout out to them. I'm going to give you by organicnuts.com. So it's the Braga Organic Farms. Um, uh, this is his family's business at uh, Christmas, they do a chocolate covered toffee pistachio, which is very addicting. I think I spent $200 plus buying just that. Um, I can't recommend the quality of the food that his family produces, and they do an amazing job. Uh, definitely check it out. The link is right there. And if you put, you know, who knows, maybe there'll be a you know, a discount code that I'll have in the future for, you know, sending you from the stream. But again, thank you for everybody. I need to find somebody to rate out because I never want to leave without rating somebody. So let's see, Twitch, who do we have? Do we want to rate a cooking stream? Do we want to rate somebody that I haven't rated before? Do we want to rate somebody with low viewer count? Do we want to find somebody who's not affiliate? Thirty-five gaming is an affiliate. Oh, Rex is an affiliate. Is thirty-five gaming hit affiliate? Rex is still going for affiliate. He's only streaming for one person. Thank you, Aurora, for the two hundred biddies. I appreciate that. I am an up Aaron. Aaron. I am underscore A R Y. It's really close. Oh, it's one. Streaming Destiny 2. It's super close to the other Also, this guy yeah, uh, is too. He's getting close to female version of Min Min. Yes, my wife was here. She was talking for a bit. She ended up taking my daughter out to go get their nails done. So we oh, got to finish up the stream. Yes, she did. So let's see. We have Destiny 2 and we have Warzone. Anybody have any other affi non-affiliates that they're trying to push to get to affiliate? I'm going to see. Friddle, I think, is affiliate. He's affiliate. Maxon, Bionicon, Momo is not affiliate yet as well. Bassmaster, Brian, Rendell. I think everybody else that I have is affiliate. Let's see, we have Deliver Us the Moon, Warzone, or Destiny 2. I will leave it up to chat. Let's get a poll going. Poll. Yes. Poll. What game to raid? Just, yeah, that's my paste. That's copy. Oh my goodness. This is space. This is enter. So when I do have typos, that's why. That's why. Because I'm not sitting straight here. Okay, so Destiny 2, um, COD, Warzone, 
and deliver as the moon. Get this going. Three minutes. We have three minutes where you guys can ask me questions and please vote on what game to raid. We have three non-affiliates that I want to try and help out with some viewership. Try and get them to affiliate. You have to get half keyboard right. Yes. I do have my two halves of the keyboard here and they are spaced about a foot apart. That for a piece of meat. Give me the meats. What are we looking at? A lot of people are delivering some meat. Fire. One for Destiny, we got five for Deliver Us a Moon. A little more than halfway. And by the way, just because I noticed it's a beautiful day outside. That's the weather. It's rough. <laughs> it's, a, it's a rough life in California. <laughs> The window. And then who knows? Maybe for the next cooking stream, we'll have. Uh, oh, the bar. Dude. And by the way, now you can see that it has fully separated. In my mouth, even. <laughs> Get in my belly. Get in my belly. All right. So it looks like Deliver Us the Moon wins. So we will be raiding out one Let's of my it. good friends, Momo. Barbecue brisket. Rax, I have a picture of the last brisket that I made. It is, yeah, it was a 14, 14 hour smoke. 18 hour smoke? I forget. So for everyone out there, please show some love to my friend Momo Chan. I'm just going to make sure that I type it correctly. Um, if you have any of my emotes, I used to have a raid message, but it doesn't quite work because I haven't figured out how to get it to post on behalf of me. But it was raid one and raid two. So the non-subscribers would use RAID 2, the subscribers would use RAID 1, but... Oh, you're on the streets? Yeah. Streets, what's what going up, on? streets? Had a pull for the cooking show. I must say, everything was bomb, homie. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, we... Uh, kitchen is a mess, as it should be, when cooking a feast. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Chop Show's up here. We had so, a great time. I'm, everything turned out almost perfectly. Uh, there was one or two mishaps. Not preheating the oven, stuff like that. But no, we had a we had a blast. I'm looking forward to being able to do this again. I just need to figure out how and what I'm going to do to make it a little bit different. But yes, uh, feel free to copy and paste the two different uh, messages. If you're a subscriber, the first one works. If you're a non-subscriber, the second one works. Uh, and we're going to go raid Momo. So this is the Mind's Eye and Chopsta saying adieu. Bon, bon appetit. And we'll see you next Friday for Dungeons and Dragons again. Take care.
Bye.